What's up everyone and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be working on the MR2. My plan was to change spring rates when I buy new coilovers, but just due to financial constraints, that's gonna be a while. I started window shopping because I was curious how much springs even cost. And then at that point, I realized that they're actually really cheap. I found a deal, so it was essentially buy one, get one free. And for $100, I was able to get all four of them. What I have been running on the MR2 is 5K in the front and 8K in the back. What I'll be switching to is 7K in the front and 10K in the back. I'm only changing the spring rates everything else like the diameter, the length, all that's going to be the same. With this change, I'm going to have to make some other adjustments to the suspension, but it will be greatly simplified because the springs themselves are the same dimensions as the old ones. We'll go ahead and get started with the install. I got to remove the brakes, disconnect the tie rod, disconnect the end link at one end, and then I will take out the coilover itself. coilover is out and it's going to just be a simple matter of swapping over the springs now. I'm not 100% sure why, but the old springs have these like little rubber things on them and it's only on the front. I'm assuming they're supposed to be there to help with noise, but I'm going to take these off and put them on the new ones. So there's one at the top. This would come off. There you go. And then there's the one at the bottom. Again, I'll take these off, put them on the other one. With everything switched over from the old spring to the new spring, we can put it back together. Time to snug it down. I am using the impact. Just be careful not to over torque it. So I actually have this on the lowest setting. It produces such little torque that, you know, I could put my hand on there, hit it and I can stop it. Just be conscientious when you tighten this bolt down. With a new spring in place, we can go ahead and just throw it back in the car. I did make sure to measure the preloads exactly where it should be, so I'm not gonna need to mess with this anymore. We got the coilover back in place. And what I'll do off camera is um, I'll put the wheel back on and then put the front end of the car down and then we'll pick up once I lift up the rear of the car and I'll talk about my plans and go from there. Since the last clip, I went ahead and I got the front of the car on the ground and then I put the back on jack stands, of course. So the plan is we're gonna replace the springs on the back. I believe I mentioned this earlier in the video, but I already did the driver's side rear and driver's side front uh, two days before filming this video. So no need to worry about those. I will actually be removing the rear sway bar. The motivation actually behind raising the spring rates is that I really like the setup without the rear sway bar on the back, but with the softer spring rates, it had too much body roll. In addition to that, I didn't have the suspension geometry kit on the car at the time. Between the higher spring rates and the suspension geometry kit, I'm feeling pretty confident that I'll be able to run this car without the sway bar and um, feel very confident driving it. Taking this coilover out will be even easier. Obviously, I got to do the undo the crash bolts. I will undo the tow arm, and the reason I do that is that when I take off the rear brake, I have to swing out the hub so I can just slide this on off and then from there this will just come off of course the sway bar is not connected so i don't even have to worry about the end link or anything like that
Well, the rear coilover is back in the car. At this point, there's just small things to do. Like I mentioned earlier, removing the rear sway bar. I gotta do just some other general maintenance stuff like replacing the supercharger oil. I won't be including that in this video because some of those things you've seen before, like uh, me removing the rear sway bar, that's nothing new there. There's really only two major things left to do on this car before I can take her back out. One is get the alignment done. And then the second one is install the axles. Unfortunately, I still do not have them. For those who aren't aware, the axles in this car are bad. And because of the swap, I need to get custom axles. I'm hoping I can get them soon because the plan is I want to take this car to an autocross event June 11th. If everything works well, like I'm hoping it does, then I take it up to Packwood. And with that, I don't have anything else for the video. Stick around. Hopefully next time I post something, it's going to be me putting the axles in on this car. Then we can go take it out of crossing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.